In this video, I'll introduce you to what might be the most exciting open source model currently available, DeepSeek v3. It's the first open source AI model to outperform well-known closed source solutions like GPT-4 or Claude 3.5 in various benchmarks. That's not possible. I'll show you how to access it, how well its chat feature works, whether it can keep up in terms of multimodal capabilities, and how to integrate it seamlessly into your own projects. To do this, we'll set up a professional chat solution in just a few minutes, which you can use as a foundation for your own projects. Why make the switch? When you compare the price performance ratio of DeepSeek to GPT or Claude, there's a clear winner. What's the catch? DeepSeek is based in China, so it's unclear how your data might be used. This means it's especially suitable for projects where data privacy isn't the main concern. Okay, let's head over to the DeepSeek homepage and find out just how good this model really is. First, we'll take a look at the benchmarks. DeepSeek v3 outperforms Claude 3.5 and GPT-40 on benchmarks like MMLU and DROP. These tests measure how well a model handles a wide range of academic tasks and complex text reasoning. Overall, DeepSeek v3 shows it can compete with, and often surpass, top closed source models. So let's start by trying out the DeepSeek chat. For this, we first need to log in. I'm going to use my Gmail account for that. All right, now we've got a chat interface. Let's start with something simple. Tell a joke. We can see DeepSeek get to work and tell a joke I've seen quite often before. Now we want to ask something more challenging, namely how many R letters are in strawberry? This is a classic question that many other open source models struggle with, but it looks good. On the first try, it answered correctly. Next, I'd like to try the analysis of an image, so I'll upload a receipt of Walmart. This receipt lists multiple items, and I'd like to find the price of one in particular, the pet toy at the top. Then I'll directly ask a question about this item, specifically how much this pet toy costs. Looks good. The model correctly states 197. That means it analyzed the receipt correctly. Now, let's try something more complex. We'll take the classic Where's Waldo image and ask where Waldo is. But that doesn't look good. It says the image has no visual clues about Waldo's location, which of course isn't accurate. All right, but now we actually want to work with the API and I want to show you that it's fairly simple and nothing to be afraid of. When we log in, we first see a note that current prices are still lower, but will soon be raised. Let's see what that means and what the current costs are. So we're using the model DeepSeek chat, and right now we pay 14 cents for 1 million tokens input and 28 cents for 1 million tokens output. But we can already see the price will increase soon. It's relatively quick to add money. Yesterday, I added $2 for testing, and it was very easy via PayPal or credit card. You can see that even though I've tested it thoroughly, I've hardly used any credit. We can already create an API key, which we'll definitely need later and should keep somewhere safe. We give it a name and click on Create API Key. Then we copy the key and store it somewhere. Now let's see how to make our first API call. We'll go to Python for this, and we can see that the code is structured pretty simply and looks a lot like the OpenAI API integration. We copy that code and create a new project by first making a folder called DeepSeek Chatbot. We switch to that folder and open our editor of choice, in my case, Cursor. The first thing we do here is create a virtual environment to keep libraries separate. We activate the environment and create a new file called app.py. Then we open it, paste in the copied content, and see that OpenAI is underlined. That means we still need to install the OpenAI package. We do that once with pip install. Then we have to insert our API key. And now we already have everything we need to run the script and try a test run. We see that after sending hello, we get back, how can I assist you today? That's great. So I'll make a git commit of the current state. And to do that, I run git init. I'll add the venv directory to the git in your so it won't be added. And then I'll commit the current status. All right, next we want to stream the response. 
That means as soon as the language model starts generating text, we'll output it immediately. For this, we wrap all the logic in a method called stream response. And we tell the language model to stream the response. Our goal is for this stream response method to be called from an endpoint. Therefore, we return each chunk in the response as soon as it arrives. We can use the yield method for this that handles each new chunk as it arrives. Now it's time for the Flask server. For this, let's create a new Python file server.py. In server.py, we first import Flask, request, and render template from Flask. And of course, we need to install the Flask library. After we've done that, we want to create two endpoints. One endpoint returns a simple HTML page that displays the chat window and communicates with the second endpoint via HTTP streaming. We'll create the index HTML page in a minute. The stream endpoint will be accessed by the HTML page via vanilla JavaScript code. We simply send the entered message as a parameter and call the stream response method from app.py. We just need to tweak the stream endpoint slightly. Specifically, we create an internal method called generate that calls the stream response, and the result is then returned by the endpoint. We can now actually start the server. Because we haven't built an HTML page yet, we can test our endpoint via the specified port by doing a simple curl request. You see here, I'm doing a quick request with the message, hello, how are you? When we fire that off, we nicely see how the result streams in, so it really is delivered via HTTP streaming. Now, of course, we want a web page with a great chat interface that uses this endpoint. We create a templates folder, and inside it, a file called index.html. There, we can add a heading, open it in the browser, and it looks good. It's being served. Here, I paste some predefined code, which is purely HTML with JavaScript. We have a few containers, a chat container, and a JavaScript method that calls the stream endpoint and puts the response into the appropriate container. This is just a basic example that can be used as a blueprint. Many of my clients use it to integrate the endpoints into their existing websites. We can also check it out live. We have a nice design, and if I say hi, we can see how the AI responds. There are no limits to your styling options. I went for an 80s arcade look, but with tools like Cursor, you can change the design anytime and adapt it to your websites and projects.